Huh. Not sure if you guys saw this video that I did, but Claudio was not anywhere near the top of my list of who I wanted Chris Jericho to lose that title to. I really wanted it to be Jonathan Gresham, even though looking back that was a bit pie in the sky. And narratively, it all looked like it was going to be Danielson, but instead they went with Claudio, and honestly, I like it. I'm happy about it. I would have liked to have seen the reign of terror of Chris Jericho continue a little longer and get a few more matches under his belt. And I think the idea of Claudio the sports entertainer was a lot of fun. But overall, I love the idea of world champion Claudio. And Claudio is someone that can really carry ROH into the future. But let's talk about the ending. I know everyone's been talking about the fact that Jericho tapped out to the swing, and honestly, I think it's fine. I think Claudio becoming champion, it's important to take a move that was already impressive and turn it into something threatening. Small tweak, I think he should have tapped out on the body instead of tapping out on the mat. If he could reach the mat, it meant he could slow himself down, so it kind of took away from the illusion in my opinion. But then again, tapping out on the body is not as visually interesting, especially if you're in the cheap seats, than tapping out on the mat. The biggest issue is the fact that this has dominated the conversation. Like, they had a fantastic match at Final Battle, and everybody wants to talk about the finish. It kind of reminds me of the blood and guts ending when Jericho went off the top of the cage. That was an incredible match, but everyone talks about the ending spot. So I feel bad that that's dominating the conversation, but overall, I think it's a good thing. Just make sure I get my Chris Jericho, Christopher Daniels match, damn it. Anyway, I'm Scott Holiday. this is Plus Two Wrestling, and let's plug in. It happens this very Sunday. It is the arrival of Kenta as he travels all the way from Japan to the Combat Zone to take on the top guy, Griffin McCoy. In six-man action, we have the return of the SAT as they take on CMD. The winner of Tournament of Death, Bobby Beverly, takes on the Savage Weight, Fred Yeha. In a CZW rules, we have War Paint versus Makeup as Ryo takes on Fabu, Andre. Also just added, Jaden Vallo takes on his mentor, Mike Mastretta. You're not going to want to miss this, so head to czwrestling.com for tickets. And it's a busy week for Old Scott Holiday because this week is also High Tension Wrestling's Christmas Trios, debuting over on the High Tension Wrestling YouTube channel on December 20th and 22nd. This two-day event will crown the greatest three-person team. Now, we don't know the brackets, but we do know the team, so let's take a look. Looking to go back to back, it is the Pop Art Flyers. Shea McCoy, Weber Hatfield, the Outfielders team up with Edith Surreal. The owner of Camp Leapfrog is able to enter a team of more than three people, according to him. It is Ethan Wild LLC. Dr. Ethan Wild joins Aaron Roxas, Dylan Mesh, and Luca Mancini. The Air Show, Razorwing, and Mach 10 join The Whisper to become Team Silent Flight. Can this team find some Christmas cheer within them? I certainly hope so. Tucked away in a manger somewhere, it is King Crab, Saber Dorado, and the Honey Badger, Ryan Mooney, and together they are Animal Kingdom. Newcomer Brian Ace gets to team with one of the most dominant tag teams in wrestling and also his trainers, Crummles and Defarge. They are team What the Dickens. And Crummles and Defarge, well, they want nothing to do with Brian Ace. High Tension Wrestling loves to throw in a bit of chaos. It's Team Wild Card. On the pre-show, we will be holding a battle royal with the top three competitors forming a new wild card trio for the tournament. War Wolf Creed and Grey Wolf Raventhorn, Tyrant, team with the holder of the Camp Leapfrog participation trophy. Abs to form team Camp 
Leapfrog. And finally, Team CFU sends three of their strongest combatants as champion Masha Slamovich leads her team of Ray Lynn and Jordan Blade. That sounds like too many teams. Like, I'm not a, a, an expert on math, but I think tournament-wise, that, that sounds like there's too many. I think that's too many. Oh, we're still going? In non-tournament action, Check out Max Zero taking on the man with unlimited power, Miles Millennium, in a hardcore white elephant match. What is a hardcore white elephant match? I don't know. But we're going to have one at Christmas Trios. So be sure to join us on the 20th and 22nd on the High Tension Wrestling YouTube channel for Christmas Trios. <laughs> With this Sunday being the arrival of Kenta in Combat Zone Wrestling, there's a lot more eyes on CZW, but you might not be caught up on all the goings-on in the Combat Zone, so let me answer some frequently asked questions about CZW. CZW? Isn't that a deathmatch company? No. But also, yes? CZW was put on the map with their ultra-violent style of wrestling. Light tubes, thumbtacks, shards of glass, barbed wire, these were all commonplace in the combat zone. But that was a while ago. CZW is now the renaissance of tradition. There is now more of a push for high-flying, technical, strong action inside of those ropes. Now that doesn't mean that it is completely gone. An offshoot of CZW put together by UVEG is the Ultraviolent Underground. Think of them as the 205 Live of CZW. They exist slightly adjacent to CZW. While 205 Live had cruiserweights, high flying, and Enzo Amore, uh, the Ultraviolent Underground has flaming tables and panes of glass and takes place in undisclosed locations and requires a membership so you can join the exclusive world of the ultraviolet underground. Okay, so it's nothing like 205 Live. But what I'm trying to say is CZW and ultraviolet underground both do exist at the same time. CZW proper is more for technical prowess than it is panes of glass. But if you're looking for that, we got you covered over there. Is CZW still a thing? Yes. I mean, there's a show on Sunday, so of course. But I do have to answer this question in that if you Google CZW, this is the first question that comes up. But CZW is very much alive and well. CZW runs twice a month once in Blackwood, New Jersey at Studio Z, and once at Havre Grace, Maryland State Theater. So be sure to come check out CZW in the town that's closest to you. The reason that a lot of people believed that CZW was no longer a thing is there was a rumor over on Squared Circle on Reddit that CZW had sold all of its title belts, and that is true. But that is just so, CZW could have brand new titles created. New titles? Then who's the champion? Currently, no one. CZW is on the path to best of the best. Best of the best is a huge tournament which will crown a brand new CZW champion. And we already have a few people that are in the tournament. First, there's the top guy, Griffin McCoy, who you can see this Sunday taking on Kenta. Also in the tournament, we have the sight to see, Action Andretti. Also entering best of the best is a man who has been on a tear through CZW. No one has been able to defeat the number one ranked Aaron Ash. And that is not just a moniker. 
CZW uses a ranking system, and if you want to keep up on the ranking system, you can follow at Combat Zone on Twitter. And finally, in best of the best so far, we have Deshaun Pratt, who was given a buy for winning a tournament chosen by our fans, and thus will be moving on to the second round. Deshaun Pratt is also the leader of CMD, which brings us to our next question. What is the tag team scene at CZW? Currently, there are no tag team champions at CZW but a new team will be crowned champion at best of the best. And currently, all the power lies with CZW's newest tag team. The team of the standout athlete Vinny Talata and Miami Mike Walker have formed through their love of partying to form post-game. They've also won a huge eight-man tag team match, so they will choose the stipulation when we crown new champions. But... Who are they going to face? Well, one team that's definitely thrown their hat into the ring is The Rep. Nate Wallace and Dave McCall have been a staple in CZW and have been ripping through tag teams for the last couple of months, so they definitely deserve a shot at the titles. Though one team that's been quite the thorn in their side has been the team of Brandon Watts and Randy Summers' Milk Chocolate. One team that's been a thorn in their side is the most succulent tag team in CZW, Milk Chocolate. Are you happy? Mike's happy. Another tag team is, of course, CMD, the team of Deshaun Pratt, Boom Harden, and Lince Dorado. But they will be facing off against... Another staple of CZW, who we haven't seen in a while, the SAT. This is all going down at The Arrival. Remember, I plugged that during the plug-in segment of the show. But who will be the new champions? Well, that all goes down at Best of the Best. And if you want to know when Best of the Best is going to be, I highly recommend you follow at Combat Zone on Twitter or check out CZWrestling.com. So that's the rundown of what's going on in CZW. I hope to see you at the arrival this Sunday at Studio Z in Blackwood, New Jersey. I'm also a little pressed for times with the arrival and Christmas trios. There's a lot for me to do. So today I will just simply say I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, whether it be Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or Wookiee Life Day. And I hope you subscribe and join me next time here on Plus Two Wrestling. And you have a great day.